We were in the Hilton Hawaiian Village for the 42nd Pacific Telecommunications Conference. And they really haven't started yet. It's still early in the morning. It's only 9.30 in the morning, a given Monday. And we saw 250 people sitting in the welcoming session, the plenary, this morning across the way. Um, but there's very few people here on the main side in the, in the, the main Hilton uh, ballroom. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll touch base with a few of the people here and see where they're from and why they're here and what they're doing and what they think of PTC. Bottom line is, you know, Hawaii has a fabulous opportunity here to remain connected, remain relevant to global telecommunications. And uh, these people are not just people from Hawaii. As a matter of fact, very few of them are from Hawaii. Uh, mostly they're from hmm, everywhere. If you're going to make a deal, what kind of a deal would you make at PTC? Um, well, I'm not here to make deals, but I'm here to actually advise people that are making deals. You're a consultant, aren't you? Yes. What do you consult in? I consult on all things ICT, so everything related to telecom and technology. This is my first time, so uh, my only comparison has been like satellite uh, 2019. Uh, it's pretty big compared to satellite 2019. Do you agree that telecommunications uh, has become all computers, all information technology? Well, for me, it's about the network. My, um, so my colleague would probably agree with that. So on my tagline, on my signature block, it's, uh, I changed it, but it's, it basically says it's all about layer one. You know, no layer one, no network. So no network, no computing. Well, I'm not here to make deals. I'm here to make partnerships. That's something totally different. Uh, uh, yes, partnership is the best kind of deal, isn't it? Well, that's the business we're in. We are making partnerships all over the planet. Yeah. Could you tell Donald Trump this, please? <laughs> I can do that. Can you give me a session with him? Yeah. I'll see what I can do. I'll make a call. <laughs> you have a cell number? Yeah. So what is your purpose in being here? Uh, to learn. To learn about what's going on with submarine cable systems and satellite systems. And to learn from my colleagues. I hate to ask you this question, but which is better? Submarine cable systems or satellite systems? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, 50-50. I'll, 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 be, I'll be the diplomat. Okay, you're going to say we need to diversify, we need, we need to have everything in the portfolio, right? I, I'm, I'm going to say that they're not mutually exclusive. They're, they're supplementing each other. The other was, was a very press-related question, trying to put an angle on it, but you can't do that. You can't do one without the other. We're just having our first meeting of the day, internal meeting, trying to get things ready, see who we're going to meet, who's going to do what, and uh, catching up on what we did yesterday. Okay, what are your aspirations? You want to make a big deal with some multinational what? Yeah, we would love to, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be like a marriage that you turn up and you have a speed dating and they tend to hand over contracts like that. So we're happy to take it slow, make the right contacts, and then uh, see where it goes from there. I feel like a football player who's been given coaching here. It's one of the top places to go for, uh, for make, making the right connections within our industry. You sound like a football player. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you, gentlemen. Where are you from, anyway? I'm from Liverpool, England. <laughs> and? You guess I'm not from Liverpool, England. No, I, no, these days, no, I don't make that guess. I'm sorry, no. Singapore. Okay. Yeah, Singapore. And do you think that Andrew Yang should win for President of the United States? You ask a question, so he's a very good candidate, and we wish him all the best. <laughs> <laughs> when people want to get to hard to get to places, we figure out how to get them there either through uh, designing and developing an undersea cable system or through high-speed satellite using low Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit satellites. So our job is to develop solutions for people who want to get to what I call hard to get to places like someplace the Aleutian Islands or um, Wake Island or uh, as we have in the past, Kwajalein or Ponape, uh, Palau, places like that. So um, we develop solutions, working very closely with clients who want to develop the project and then working with the local government agencies on identifying what needs to be done to satisfy uh, regulation for them. But we do this in the Pacific, we do it in the Caribbean, and we do it in the Atlantic. How are your global solutions being affected by the effects of climate change? It's of concern, particularly to the Pacific Islanders. Uh, Majuro, uh, Kwajalein, 
uh, Ponape and uh, the smaller islands in the Western Pacific. They're very they're they're very concerned about it, and uh, communications is key for addressing what the situation might be. So in that regard, there's a sense of more, a greater sense of urgency with uh, rising tides, but this is also occurring in other places in the Caribbean as well, where there is concern. So uh, we think about that. A lot of deals. How many deals exactly? More than 10. <laughs> Less than 20? Probably, yes, yes. Which side you come from? In, uh, in these conversations. What are you proposing? What are you offering? Uh, international voice and SMS transit. Okay. Uh, this is Where are you from? From Russia. But I work for a United States company. It's our first time visiting here. We we're very interested in telecommunications, especially with the submarine cables and data centers. We we're one of the Mitsubishi members. Oh, does it say? Oh, yeah, MFFG. So we want to do financing, but we need to learn more, so that's why we're here. So what do you think about uh, Carlos Ghosn? Actually, everybody say he looks like me. <laughs> the appearance. <laughs> uh, well, forget about what he did. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. Me says, well, for, okay, why don't we see you later? Um, okay, how about much later? <laughs> how about next year? Okay. <laughs> so... Why are we here? Well, who wouldn't want to be in uh, Honolulu at this uh, time of the year? I'm here uh, from China uh, because this is where my customers come. Uh, this is where my competitors come. Uh, fantastic networking opportunities uh, and to catch up with, uh, with old friends. Ni hao ma. Did I say that right? No, because he's Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> but you were close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Ogazaimas. <laughs> so, why are you here? Okay, um, this is the beginning of the year where we find uh, the developments about the sovereign cable industry. And, you know, I'm from Japan, I represent KDDI, and I think this is an, an important thing, and it's important to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know of any other conference like this one? Uh, no. Or I hear like Mobile World Congress, but you know it's not an uh, area of telecommunication business, so I don't engage. But interest to see how you know they run. Yeah. yeah I think you know it'd be um, interesting to see different things. Are you making a deal this morning? You have you have authority, for example, in your back pocket, where you want to buy or sell something, you know, for a specific amount. And can you tell us what that amount is? So. I, I don't have the authority, I have to ask his permission. <laughs> because he's the boss. <laughs> okay. But he's the brains of the outfit, and yeah. I will invariably say yes. Wait, say that again. Yeah, he the... wants me to get that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> you say he's the brains of the outfit. He's the, he's the commercial director of SBSS, uh, Sino-British uh, Submarine Systems. Uh, yeah, so we work we work together in uh, based in Shanghai, and uh, absolutely, he is the... Uh, He's got the smarts. I have the looks, as you can clearly see. <laughs> yes, you do. Looks for radio, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So tell me about the role of women in telecommunications, in global telecommunications. I think the role of women have been growing in telecommunications. In fact, I also go to PTC as well as NANOG and ITW, and we've seen the growth um, happen at each of the events that we've been to. So what about your technology? What's this? Oh, Hawaii's premier data center, the fortress, the <laughs> DR fortress. I remember you. you remember yeah, way back when you were called something else. It was at one point uh, Equinix as well yeah, as uh, Pihana Equinix. Pacific. Yes, right. Yes. Yeah. What is that? So everybody will know. Okay, so basically we provide customers with space and power for their sensitive equipment. And you're still out at the airport? Yes. Oh, yeah. With a, Absolutely. With walls two feet thick in concrete. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Making uh, smoothies and juices for uh, PDC participants. You were here last year, too, weren't you? I remember you. I have, oh, I have footage of you. Yeah, and you, are you better this year? We're great, yeah. Do you have a store or something? We have a Ward Avenue. It's called now, before it's Miku and just now it's Honolulu Bistro inside Ohana Hali Marketplace. How do you say hello in Korean? 안녕하세요. 
onion cocktail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great, great. Okay. Great, great. Can we? Uh, what are these things? Passive WDM, which stands for wavelength division multiplexing. Ah. There is uh, uh, four different wavelengths: GPON, XGSPON, NGPON2, and 5G Mobile. A product uh, combine four wavelengths all together into this single strand of fiber. Peace. What does Peace do? Uh, it's a summary uh, optic network. Uh, it's a private uh, cable uh, network. It will pro provide uh, the uh, telecommunication from uh, Europe to Pakistan, also Europe to France, uh, to Europe to Africa. So this route will uh, um, will feed the demand of the tele telecommunication uh, requirement for for local people, for the African people, and for for Asia. This will uh, uh, how to say accelerate the the people communi uh, communication. Well, the Internet Society is a nonprofit. We've been around for about 27 years, and we do all sorts of work in policy and development and in technology. And we are here primarily today or this week talking about manners, which is mutually agreed norms for routing security. And so what we're doing is we're trying to convince every telco, everyone who runs a network, to do four simple things to improve their routing security. So it's things like filtering and anti-spoofing and global coordination um, and, and uh, route validation to make sure that you're doing the right thing for your network and for the entire internet. What about net neutrality? Do you, what is your general position on that? Do you like it or not? We like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Or oh, and you you're the first one I've seen the swag. Oh yeah? You well, you have the swag. You're loaded with swag. Why? Oh, I, I see some swag I like. Absolutely. Well please help yourself. I understand that you guys are in the process of acquiring a cooking oil company. Cooking oil company. Oh that's Crisco, sorry. <laughs> what do you do at Cisco? Uh, well, we're a partner of Cisco, but we're actually uh, Hawaiian Telecom and CBTS part of Cincinnati Bell. Why, why didn't I know that? I think you did know that. I think you're baiting me, but that's okay. <laughs> Let me go and bait the other guy now. I'm uh, working with the security team, so we're expanding out our advanced services for security. Security? Yes. Uh, Somebody called security on us already? Exactly. Yes, we do. We do physical security. We could escort. <laughs> yeah. So security is so important, you know? I mean, the world is um, collapsing into fraud, I'm sorry to say that, including in some very important uh, national capitals that we know of. Uh, There's a big, big discussion tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Um, but, w you know, what about keeping up with the fraudsters? What about actually getting ahead of the game? Is that possible, or is it, is it always, um, you know, trying to chase them from behind? Um, unfortunately, I think we're, we're chasing them from behind, but uh, there, there are some uh, methods that we're, we're working on to kind of try to stay ahead. Yeah. Could you identify those? Uh, speak deeply into the microphone. <laughs> speak deeply into the microphone. I, I don't think I could do it at this point, but uh, yeah, if you, if you want to talk about it in a, in a closed forum, we could do that. I want you to know going, going forward that um, I prefer cable over satellite. Do you really? Yeah, and I know that uh, Hawaiian Telecom does too. Am I right? Am I That's right? That's correct. Yes. That's Tell correct. us about it. Well, we've invested, as you know, in subsea fiber that runs from Southeast Asia to the Philippines to Guam here in Hawaii and then over to the mainland. And then we have alternate routes as well. And we've been invested over the years in providing fiber-based connectivity, not just here in Hawaii, but all throughout the Pacific Rim. And we're still dedicated to that, and that's an important part of what we're doing here. We have a lot of meetings with other carriers and different groups that are interested in making use of that. Plus, we're also announcing our new relationship with CBTS, and that is offering a lot of these other services that you see to our enterprise customers here uh, and across the mainland and North America, and they do some things in the UK as well. Wow. Hawaiian Telecom has really, really changed. It's really come up to high technology, that's what. Well, you know, we've always been in that industry uh, for years under different names, and we're excited about our current situation with Cincinnati and CBTS, and we're very excited for what the future will bring for all of us. Tell me about the new cable. What's the status? And uh, if you don't mind, can you give me the street address where the landing is? <laughs> uh, no, I can't. Uh, but uh, now we've been in operation now for a few years uh, on the CUS, uh, CUS cable. Uh, we also participate in several others that you're probably familiar with. Uh, it's going quite well. 
Uh, we carry a lot of traffic and uh, we're continuing to make opportunities and deals with carriers and businesses uh, alike. So this means I get, <laughs> I hope I'm right about this, I get faster um, broadband and cheaper. That's what's coming, right? Oh, absolutely, particularly for people here in Hawaii where we serve, that was one of the first advantages that we were able to do. Uh, increased bandwidth, absolutely, to our customer base and then lowered our costs so that we could pass that on to our customers as well. But a lot of what the subsea cable does is enable other carriers and other providers as well. So we sell high speed bandwidth down and now we're able, based on the success we've had, to offer lower speed. By that I mean gigabit speeds and things under 10 gig, 100 gig and things like that. That's exciting. I feel my heart is beating a little faster now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. You agree with all of that, right? Absolutely. You say that. <laughs> Michael? Yes, sir. Absolutely. I agree. <laughs> Okay, so you want Bishop Street. I'm also with the Internet Society, so we're here to meet with organizations that are currently working in the Internet community and how they can help support some of the initiatives of our organization. And we focus on programs and initiatives that keep the Internet safe, secure, and accessible. And do uh, you have good manners? I have excellent manners, yes. Are you also with the Internet Society? I'm with Internet New Zealand. So we run .NZ, we're the in the domain name industry, which is not a lot of people here, but we also work on global internet issues. And um, I'm here to speak about the Christchurch Call Initiative that's actually happened and, and sort of talk to the people who are help building the infrastructure of the internet about that kind of human side of the internet and, and sort of building an internet for good for everybody. You sound American to me. I am, I originally, but I'm also a Kiwi. <laughs> this is a good thing in our time. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of people who want to become oh, Kiwis, yeah, but they can't do it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I've been a citizen for 20 years, actually, in May, but I've got dual citizenship. So I'd I like to talk to you privately about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, there are a lot of people that would. I could set up a booth, probably. Yeah. Have you heard of Kuching? No. But Have I, you heard of Sarawak? No. I, I guess I Have should. Have you heard of East Malaysia? Y yes. Ah, oh, right. Good, good. Yes. Okay, so Narrowing right in I don't know if you can see the map over there, but there's an island there called Borneo, and so we're from uh, East Malaysia. Uh, Kuching is... Uh, just you see it on, there on the map. So that's our headquarters. We're from Pipitel. Uh, but we're also here with the Sarawak Multimedia um, uh, Agency, authority. authority, I should say, who are the regulator in Sarawak. And we're going to be supporting them in building the, the digital economy in uh, East Malaysia. So we're building a t tier four data center in, uh, in Kuching. And we're building a cable which takes us from uh, Kuching down to Batam, so it joins us with the Indonesian market. Uh, we're also building cables um, as part of a consortium up to Hong Kong. Why are you connecting all these places? So Sarawak itself is quite a small market. So we're going to be an edge uh, for the China and the Indonesian markets. And we're going to take our cut in the middle. So we're, we're here to promote, uh, promote our proposition and uh, get people interested. So what, what, what effect does this have on the economies of these places, on the technology in these places, um, on their geopolitical positioning? Uh, is this a good thing for people to be connected in that area? Well, for us, it, it kind of puts us on the map because uh, at the moment, it, as you have illustrated, not many people know where we are. And, and also currently IP transit prices are very high, broadband prices are high, and we want to um, become more of a community, the IP transit community, uh, bringing the prices down by building more cables and providing um, you know, a large amount of data center space next to our cable landing station, which will make us easily connected up both north, south, and in our domestic market. We're, we're partnering with uh, XL Exiata, which is a, a large operator in Indonesia. So that will connect us very much more into their market um, and provide an alternative route for them because uh, Kalimantan uh, is part of Borneo, as is, and Sulawesi is next door. So coming through Kuching, 
they have a much uh, faster route, uh, lower latency. Where are you from? I'm from the UK. I've, I'm not, but I've been supporting uh, PPTEL for a couple of years now. You're, you're an engineer? I'm an engineer by... by I can always tell. You can tell. Yeah. The Engineers tests. have a certain je ne sais quoi. You know? Ah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see, we want to tap into this uh, Indonesia market because now Indonesia rely on Singapore 95%. So they do not have an alternate route out for their upstream traffic. Yeah. So that is the, the reason. And why are you guys here in, in Pacific Telecommunications? Because this is a world, worldwide event. Everyone is here. So it's easy for us to make our networking as well. What is Stolz? So we're a, a cooling infrastructure company. We uh, manufacture and supply computer room, data center, co-location, hyperscale cooling uh, infrastructure. That's it? That's it. That's what we do. That's our core business. Uh, we enjoy um, you know, global customers. Many of those customers are here over the last four days. And um, they uh, are market leaders in themselves in this region. And we're very proud to be um, sole supplier to these facilities uh, locally as well as in the Asia Pacific and, uh, region. Um, we have now been uh, operating in, in, as an Oceania team for, for 20 years, but as a company on a global level since 1947. So we have uh, 130 partners worldwide, we have uh, 11 factories, and we have 21 subsidiaries. So we're very proud of our, of our history. Um, we've demonstrated to the market our resilience, our energy efficient, uh, efficiency, and um, that has certainly secured the, the company for a long time. So we're really proud of that. And on the stand um, today, we have myself as, as managing director of the Stultz Oceania uh, region. Um, the gentleman to my left is um, responsible for our New Zealand and, and uh, Fiji and Cook Islands. And the guy that's just done a runner, um, he's, a, he's a local Australian uh, national sales manager. So um, this is our first, um, I guess, participation at the forum. Uh, we're really pleased to be a part of it. We've certainly learned, learned a lot and met some uh, interesting people, um, interesting sessions, and, and we hope to be back. Uh, next year. As John said, we're, we're really pleased and proud to be here uh, and so far we've, uh, we've made some great connections and we're looking forward to making some more. Yeah, have you been, uh, have you been uh, surfing? Because the surf is 12 to 14 today. Yeah? Uh, look, I went to the North Shore the other day, it was 15 foot, I was looking for 40 foot, so uh, no, I, I didn't get my board out. Come in on the fires for a minute. Oh look, it's been very devastating for for um, for Australia. Um, you know, we've covered a, a vast area of land. Um, it's been predicted that we've we we lost 15 uh, five million hectares worth of of land. Um, you know, half a billion to a billion worth of of, of wildlife and animals altogether. Um, you know, do we put that down to climate change? Do we put that down to something else? I, I can't really answer. Suffice to say that it's been very devastating. Um, a lot of misplaced people. Um, you know, we've we've been living now in in haze. Uh, for four months uh, in drought for well over 12 months and and while we're speaking today we've had or uh, well, the last three days while we've been here uh, we've had quite the opposite we've had um, damaging storms and, th uh, and and winds and and hail storms and flooding it's not arbitration mediation just mediation mediating what call records in uh, telecom billing this, this we do a billing software for telecom companies so mediation is taking the call records off the switch Converting it to a billable record, then plugging it in the system. Where do you have to be to deploy your technology? You just have to be on the internet. Essentially, we have a data center in the U.S., and you connect via the internet to our system, and we run your billing. We take care of disaster recovery for you, and then we fulfill the billing by sending out either paper copies of the bills or electronic copies of the bills to customers. So it's about billing. Exactly. And you have, you have to have this center in the United States to service United States clients, or can you be elsewhere? You can be elsewhere. Um, we also sell licenses as well, so you can actually have all the software on site as well, wherever your home country is. What I found interesting in your, your remark is uh, that um, you can rebuild it in case it, in, it's destroyed, damaged, held for ransom, what have you, huh? Exactly, you, you can, um, we, with the disaster recovery scenario. We have everything backed up, so if something would happen and you have a crash, we can get the information back and so you can rebuild it. I'm here to, to meet some maybe some new clients, some new partners. I'm, I'm very 
specific field, not common uh, wholesale or common telecommunication services. I'm only in the international premium rate services and I'm looking for, um, let's say, for some specific carriers. There are not many in, around and I have two meetings which new one, which new cl possible clients. Where are you from? I'm from Switzerland. Partners, it's meaning a company which are, a, which are willing and able to work with us. Mostly carriers with their own number ranges. What, what's the nature of a telecom partnership in that context? What would you do? What would they do? They give us numbers and then the business model it's uh, sharing, it's based on sharing of um, termination rate. So, so Richard, uh, Surfpack, you're right here, you know, in this global conference, um, you're going to rule the world. Tell me how you're going to do that. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, we, uh, we, we had a route in Hawaii, we started here in 2004, we have been really growing. So our latest endeavor is building a data center in Hawaii. You know, in the last 20 years, there was no major data center development. So we bought the land, we bought the building, we're doing the, you know, doing the development. It's, it is the largest data center in Hawaii. 30,000 square feet, not only data center, but also disaster recovery. You know, if you look at the map in Oahu, this is our fiber connectivity map. And you can easily tell most of the businesses in Hawaii's Where, South Shore. The yeah, the data center is here. Okay. Right? So this is the safest location because if a tsunami, hurricane, whatever major event happening on South Shore Oahu is going to affect 90% of the businesses. But we are here safe. You know, if some people need a disaster recovery space, they can go there, you know, shower, cafeteria, everything. <laughs> Full service. Full service, exactly. I just wanted to just highlight how much of a difference this would be and how much of an impact this is really going to um, affect the local businesses and really just allowing them to even look beyond Hawaii or even giving an opportunity for you know, connectivity for international businesses to even look at Hawaii as since we're so located strategically in the middle of the world or the ocean, um, yeah, it gives more opportunity for the local businesses that are here in Hawaii. I'm speaking at the conference on the topic of text messaging over toll-free phone numbers. But, well, text messaging, you know, everybody telling me I have to learn to do that, and little by little I'm learning. But uh, there's a resistance because I like email, I'm old-fashioned, you know. Yeah. Why should I care about text messaging? Well, you might not, but businesses that want their consumers to listen to what they're saying um, like text messaging because less than 20% of people check and open uh, an email, whereas 90% or more open a text message within three minutes of receiving it. Um, makes a difference for businesses. So things like fraud alerts on your credit card or reminders of your doctor's appointment coming up, critical things for folks, uh, you know, wanting a good communication mechanism. Um, and the fact that it can work on a historical telecom platform, like a toll-free number that's, you know, been around for decades, people like it. Future text messaging is rich. Every landline phone number for a business and toll-free number in North America is going to have text enabled on it so that when a customer sends a text response, they're going to be able to see it and react to it. Um, only about 5% do it today, so a lot of room for growth. Did you say landline? I thought you said landline. How do you do that? We um, have connections to all the mobile operators in North America. We've set up a cloud infrastructure that basically takes what the carriers have been doing on a person-to-person -person basis for years and replicates that for businesses. So it looks exactly the same to a consumer, it's just that what they're talking to is Bank of America or Chase or their local doctor's office. It's the way of the future.